Let's get into our fraud list. We have a list mm. of frauds that, you know, are, are they really frauds or are they going to be permanently on this list? And we'll just get to that first one, the Dallas Cowboys. Mm -hmm. Do you think they have a chance to get off the, are they off the fraud list or are they, they we're going to stamp them frauds for the rest of the season? I can safely in the division stamp them for frauds for the rest of the season. A hundred percent. I think if you're, if you're looking, it's, it's the Eagles are a clear number one. The mm -hmm. Giants to, might be in the middle of the pack, if you will, if they turn it around. But uh, honestly, I can see the commanders bumping up yeah. too. Yeah, but um, I was going to say, don't sleep. So, like, I, I mean, the way they've played the past couple of weeks too, there are a lot of, like, again, when you sit down and you watch the games, there are a lot of points where you're like, all right, week four, this could be the week where they finally find their rhythm and they just go on a tear. The Cowboys, like I said, sitting two and two, they have not looked the best. And certainly their offense hasn't looked as powerful as it has in the past couple of years. Their defense, we know this, has always been trash because Dak's fantasy numbers and Dak's stats are always up because they're usually always throwing <laughs> to try to catch up and win a game too. Um, but yeah, no, I, going back to it, I think we can stamp them as being frauds. I don't, ex I expect maybe a wild card out of them, but I don't expect them to run away with it like everybody was thinking. KC and the refs are about to get another dub. Hey, you know what, Bert? I had to take this segment to the next level. I know they're three and zero, and I know this is not going to be a popular thing to say, but I am willing to put the Kansas City Chiefs on the fraud list, or at least on fraud watch. Mm -hmm. They have benefited this season more obvious than the last from the whistles. Yeah. And I mean, blatantly Dan obvious blatantly. in the last game. Danny Jones actually, Daniel Jones did look better, and I believe he was better than Dak Prescott in that game, other than the touchdown. And I'm, I'm not even going to count the interception late because it was a Hail Mary and they were trying to make it happen. But yeah. Kansas City, I think it's safe to assume if you, t if you ignore the record and you're just watching them, Mahomes does not look like the Mahomes we know. Travis Kelsey. I'm not going to say he's washed, Bert. I know uh, I'm going to be careful. I really, you're talking to a fantasy owner of Travis Kelsey right now. I'm waiting yeah. for it to kick in. He just displays the characteristics that of somebody who looks washed. I'll say that. He's he's tired from his yeah, uh, jet setting and and, tread. and that could, honestly, that could be it. Off season, hanging out with Taylor Swift. I get Can't it. Blame it's him. A couple, you don't play in the preseason. Maybe starting this week, the Kansas City Chiefs will wake up, right? Mm -hmm. But. Their receiver situation isn't great. Their defense isn't all that great. Patrick Mahomes turning the ball over. I believe second in the league in turnovers. Again, we're in week three. We going into week four, I mean. So there's a lot of season to be played. I'm just talking about the here and now. The problem I'm seeing all across sports media is people are talking about last year, talking about it's the Chiefs, benefit of the doubt. They're benefiting from this benefit of the doubt. Burt, mm -hmm. last year, I could last 10 minutes with my wife. This year, <laughs> I can only give her four. What I did last year don't matter, okay? It doesn't matter. I, I get it. I was great last year. I, it doesn't matter this year. She's still disappointed right now, today. <laughs> so I can't I, – I, I understand the notion of wanting to give a team a benefit of the doubt. That matters when you talk about contenders overall. You got to, you know, to be the man, you got to beat the man. But it's okay to watch what we're seeing now. We've seen players hit the wall in one season. Yeah. Russell Wilson comes to mind. He was great one year and yeah. just completely fell off the face of the earth the next. And he's I been mean, trying to climb back ever since. Yeah. I mean, you can go back to your boy Cam too, if you want to talk Cam. about that as well. Yeah. yeah. But so look, for me, I'm not ready to call them 100% frauds. And I know what you're saying with the benefit of the doubt. The issue I'm seeing is it's deja vu. We're trading blue and red for red and white because the Pats did this shit every single year. They benefited from the, they benefited from the whistles. The Chiefs are doing the same. Uh, I will say, Tom Brady never looked washed. Tom Brady, right. there was never. never a doubt in that. Uh, there was always a doubt in their receiving core, though, until Bel Bill Belichick found another former lacrosse player to just stick in there. So, it, you know, we've seen the script. It's just in a different season. Um, I, and look, you play the game as it is. Now, I, I think you can argue any game, any whistles, like any flags, that's fine. The most egregious one was the one that ended the game this past weekend yeah, against terrible. the Falcons because they were robbed on yeah. national television. Yeah. So um I, I they should be 
a two and one team going into this weekend, but they're not. They're a three and zero team. So uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, who did I say they have this week? The Chargers. Yes, they have the Chargers. We'll Whoever, see. That might be a tougher defense. matchup. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Chargers defense. Mike Hughes says the Bears had Brady throwing up four fingers. Mans has dementia. <laughs> Listen, stop bringing up the Bears. You you guys lucky. I don't have an, I don't have a Bears segment in here. But Mike Hughes, I, I told you about Caleb. Williams. Y'all better figure y'all stuff out. All right. Yeah. Y'all gotta figure out what the Bears are doing because y'all mm-hmm. hype. You hyped them up all off season, and I can't even call them frauds because uh, they they were never in a yeah they weren't in the yeah, spot they were never in the spot to but, be frauds. Hey. I don't know if that's sarcastic or not, and I don't know if it's the red shirt or the backwards hat, but I know I look young every single day. I just feel old. All right. Yeah. Um, like you, I miss that guy. Yeah, uh, he's great. He's a great. But I mean, and I don't know if you're going to get to it, but you can't. I mean, you said, forget how you freaks did, but you know they just they looked washed. They don't look like a team that should continue sustaining winning. But we want to talk about a three and zero team where. Everybody outside of Western Pennsylvania is scratching their head. It's got to be the Steelers. Yeah. It has to be. Yeah. This isn't Speaking, a team built yeah. for distance, right? No. I mean, and look. Well, I don't know. We don't know that because Mike Tomlin's never had a losing season. So I was just about to say the same thing. We have yeah. to rest our laurels on the fact that Mike Tomlin is the man. And that's yeah. it. And he's literally polishing a squad of turds to get out there and win football games. I, Jeremy, and we've talked about this in our, in our, preseason shows all of us there was uncertainty at the quarterback position we were like there's no way the Steelers are going to like start out this hot right like it's just not going to happen but it is and you've got to give credit to coaching because they're making it work without Russell uh, Russell Wilson even stepping foot onto the football field plus we know for a fact their division's kind of shaky right now so yeah it could be theirs for the taking but do we really think that week four and on they're going to they're going to do the thing. So I didn't think we were going to get to the Bears, but let's let's squeeze them in. Oh, like it's Mike said, Tripp and just, still? Justin go. Feuds and Marvin Harrison Jr. should be on the Bears. And I believe we said that, Bert. The Bears were better off taking Marvin Harrison Jr. and drafting a lineman at nine, and mm-hmm. they would be a lot better off than they are today. It is not what shouldn't be escaped, and I know we're making fun of the Steelers right now, mm-hmm. but it's odd that <laughs> literally overnight, Justin Fields didn't take two or three years and sat by this isn't a Geno Smith situation. No. He immediately went to the Steelers mm-hmm. and looks awesome. All jokes aside, we're we're not believing it because we know what the Steelers have been the last couple of years. Well, you on figured the their ticket. biggest competition was what the Chargers? Right. So I so I think the sample size is still yet to be seen. Well, well I mean, I, I, say I agree with saying, you. He like just they looks, rolled over Denver, better. but then Denver just absolutely yeah. steamrolled the Bucks. So, yeah. and this is this is what's hurting my brain this season with NFL. Week from week, you see Baker Mayfield and the Bucks going out there, absolutely crushing it. Walking in this weekend, me, the naive fantasy owner that I am, figure, you know what? I'm going to pick up the Bucks defense. And you know what they do? They do jack shit for me because the Bucks this this past weekend looked absolutely terrible. So. Although I can sit here and say, and I know Steeler fan, the Steelers fans, this one's for you because I'm truly at a loss as to how this is happening because I can sit there and point saying, well, the Chargers were their only competition, but they managed that game well. The other two, they could, I mean, obviously they're not good teams by any means, but then, hey, one of those teams was Denver that just steamed rolled a good team. So I, I'm, Jerem, I don't know what's going on. Up is down, down is up, left is right. Help me out. So it's funny because the reason Russell Wilson is there is because People around the NFL, the Steelers, a lot of thought they were a quarterback away. Yeah. So it's funny that that quarterback happens to be Justin Fields, who other people thought would is a lot better than what the Bears happened. So a different coaching. So I was with JT and the Don, and 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 Don mentioned. By the way, you looked fantastic. Thank you. That look on you is is just superb. Thank you. I had to I had to rub it in JT's face because his dolphins are spiraling and my bills are flourishing. Um. So. Yeah, it's 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 crazy. Here, Mike Hughes again. Twenty, uh, he went twenty five for thirty two last week. He's never thrown over twenty five passes ever. But yeah. Don said it perfectly. Different coaching style, utilized talent. It's it's a gap in coaching and front office management. The the Steelers have a well run organization. They have for three thousand six hundred and twenty two <laughs> years. Yeah, and, and the Bears. I, I don't know. It's so I don't know what Ryan Poles is doing. Uh, he's a former player. Maybe he should get CTE checked because making some of these moves and not hiring the right coaches. Like we knew they were doomed. They hired Eberflus. Like that's not even, that doesn't even sound like a coach that 
that can make it happen. Um, <laughs> you, you spoke about the Bucks, and I was this close to putting them on the fraud list after their. Uh, I can't. Last, I can't get to do it yet. Not I yet. I can't do it to the big show. But mm -hmm. there's a team we mentioned earlier, the Philadelphia Eagles. I think I'm ready to put them on the fraud list. The Eagles and the Bucks to me are the same team heading in opposite directions. Jerem, we're going to find out who's a fault, who's a fraud this weekend when they they, they match up at one o'clock on Sunday. So I can't, and that's why I said, you know, the Eagles, I put them on the fraud list. Now, this week, it's not a good barometer for that, right? They're mm -hmm. going to be missing Devonta Smith, yeah. who took that nasty hit. Oh, They're that's... probably going to be missing AJ Brown again. So it's going to be hard to judge them. But even before all that, the defense hasn't been playing well. Mm -hmm. Jalen Hurts hasn't straight up hasn't been good. He has a turnover in seven straight games. Yeah. So you don't trust Hurts. I don't know if you trust Sirianni or the coach. I don't. And so God, there's so many people that hate that man. Yeah. I I, I like Sirianni's aggressiveness. I just some of his play calling. I liken him to Sean McDermott when I complain about Sean McDermott. What's the strategic advantage he brings on Sunday? What does what does he do well? All the great coaches has a thing that you can say that coach won them the game. I don't know if Sirianni has that, and if he does, I haven't seen it. So I would probably need an Eagles fan to tell me that. There's nothing that Sean McDermott, to me, does well. I will say, I'll give him credit. He's a defensive coordinator, so the defense is always going to be uh, respectable. But I don't mm -hmm. see those adjustments, especially when you look at the 13-second thing. That's that's a defensive blunder on him, especially in the playoffs. So, uh, But with the Eagles, we've talked about it the last few years. They kind of have the Cam Newton, Carolina Panther 2015 bug where they had one excellent season, and they've kind of been riding that, and they haven't shown you much of anything else. And if anything, they're regressing. So I'm going to put – and I know they're 2-1. and one. I'm putting them on the fraud list. <laughs> I can't I can't fully put them on that list yet. I think I this you. this weekend will be the determination because one of those teams is going to drop down, but for me I still think barring further injury and I know they're already down to top receivers. Um they I mean look, once they're healthy again they're still a force, right? I mean honestly they're they're a Jason Kelsey normal tush push system away from being back on the up and up right and they just have to find like look obviously things have changed slightly they just have to find a rhythm but i mean you you have to look i know you mentioned jalen hurts you have to look past it in the fact that he's got saquon behind him now uh he's still able to be mobile and run too they've just yeah. got to straighten out what they're doing in the interim to make up for injuries at wide receiver and i think they're back defense is going to be i mean look play your matchups well study the book uh i think with an offense like philly you have a chance to compete, uh, even though, I mean, oh, man. See, now you got me thinking because he's been, <laughs> this is where it is because Jalen Hurts has been a turnover machine. What is he's got like yeah. five or six on the year so far, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So make or break weekend. Let's just go back to that. Make or break weekend. This is going to be the fraud bowl. See who yeah. it's going to be. I like the Bucks in a bounce back game. I really do. Um, yeah. And with the injuries to the Eagles, who's to say? But I still think if you're looking, and I'm taking this from a divisional standpoint, I still think they're it for the NFC East. It's, I mean, which tells you a lot about the competition throughout. But uh, I still think when you match them up with the other teams, injuries or not, they're still the better team.